The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to this morning's Marketing Clinic with your host, James McDonald. Well, thank you very much, Andrew, and I'd like to start by welcoming our participants to our marketing session here. We're going to look at some ads today, and I want to start by thanking everybody who uploaded ads to look at. Uh, remember, anything that you're doing um, that pertains to lead generation, you can upload and we'll take a look at it. And I also recommend that you not just upload it to the ad clinic file, but also send it to your coach as well. The more eyeballs that look at what you're doing, uh, the more advice you'll get, the more suggestions. And remember, a good marketer is a good tester. It's not so much that a good marketer invents something that's really good, it's that a good marketer tests a whole bunch of different approaches, determines what works and what doesn't, and does more of what works. So. The way to test more is by getting multiple uh, you know, uh, advice and then testing the different suggestions that come your way. Test them, track them, do more of what works and do less of what doesn't. It's pretty simple uh, when you look at it that way. So that's the reason that you wanna upload anything that you're doing. Even if you're doing something that's generating success for you, perhaps we can offer some suggestions for you to test that might even work better. Uh, and if it doesn't, you can always go back to the original model. So bear that in mind. So we're going to look at some ads here today, um, online, uh, direct mail, business card, um, uh, editorial style ads, et cetera, et cetera. There are all kinds of different ways that we can lead generate. I know that um, many of you are focusing on uh, pay-per-click stuff, uh, Facebook stuff, because it's it, there's a lot of leverage there. And by that, I mean that we can set up an account, we can set up a budget, and we can have ads running every day, 365 days a year, that have absolutely nothing to do with our day-to-day -day attention, which is nice because if they even generate a lead a day, we're generating a lead a day, and it, it has nothing to do with us, uh, which is really nice. But I would suggest that what it does have to do with you is – to constantly be testing to make sure that you're maximizing not just the number of prospects you're generating, but the quality of prospects as well. So we want to we want to micro adjust the different ads that you're running, which will dictate the prospects that you're attracting. So if we want to if we want to attract a higher end prospect, the message needs to compel a higher end prospect. If we want to generate lots of prospects, then we need to focus on messages that, that have a much wider funnel, that are much more widely appealing, that aren't as specific to a specific group. But of course, the more specific we are, although the fewer prospects we'll generate, the more those prospects will represent exactly what it is we're looking for. So we're gonna pay special attention to that here um, on our ad clinic and we'll go through all of the ads that were uploaded to the ad clinic session and I'll encourage everybody who didn't do that to make sure that you do it for next Friday. Um, but Andrea, at the same time, we can also uh, take some questions in the chat. Maybe some of you uploaded your ads and you have some additional comments. I I'm here as well, James. Oh, hey I'm Craig, how well. are you? Good, I was just wondering, uh, could you repeat that again, please? Could I repeat that again? I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> thank God. Um, I'm kidding. No, you you were talking uh, for for quite a while there, and I wanted to let you know I was I was I was with you here on the call. Oh. Um, so we, yes. Uh, so we can do this. If you want to start critiquing the ads, what I'll do is I'll critique the chat questions. Well, not only that, Craig, but here's what'll be really helpful. When you upload an ad, it would be nice to have an idea as to how the ad performed where it ran or what your budget was, what you spent on it, how many responses it, it generated, anything, any additional information about the ad campaign would be really, really helpful. So maybe the best place that you can do that is in the chat and then uh, Craig, you can monitor those while you and I go through and take a look at these ads. Um, now, the very first ad that we're looking at here, Craig, is a Facebook ad and um, this ad on Facebook was from Scottsdale Home Guide, really good name, not from a realtor, but from an information source. So that's the number one thing that we look at, not the number one, but the first thing that we look at is where is this coming from? Is it coming from a real estate salesperson? Because if it is, it's going to be widely ignored. And I see this all the time when I scroll through my Facebook, I'll see local realtors advertising on the, on the, um, uh, the newsfeed on Facebook 
but the the message is coming from a real estate salesperson and I know by virtue of the fact that it's coming from a salesperson that alone is going to uh, really adversely impact the response, if not completely eliminate the response. So coming from an information source like this is very, very smart. Scottsdale Home Guide, perfect. Okay, then it says, um, want to buy a home in Scottsdale area? Start here and receive a free list of Scottsdale foreclosures and discharge sales. I would get rid of want to buy a home in Scottsdale. Um, let's focus instead on what it is, what it is that you're offering. Um, I would have it say, uh, Scottsdale foreclosure and distress sale hot list. Let's get right to it. Remember this, prospects look at advertising more so than read advertising. So if, if they're more likely to glance at it, let's dictate what it is they likely see and let's get right to it and focus on the WIFM. What would, what would really compel them to want to take another step and, and click on the ad? Let's get right to it. And, and the WIFM here is you're offering foreclosure and distress sale hot list in Scottsdale. So Scottsdale foreclosure distress sales hot list. That's, that's your, that's your heading there. Here's what I also really like about this ad, uh, the map. Andrew and I were discussing this prior to uh, starting the webinar here. When you use a picture of a property, it tends not to work as well. And the reason is because very often whatever property you choose is only going to be representative to a tiny segment of the audience. Whereas a map of Scottsdale cannot be eliminated by anyone who's looking for a home in Scottsdale. So you cannot disqualify this based on a map of Scottsdale. And so that's just a much, much better idea. Um, now, I want to hedge a little bit because there are some of you that have generated great response, including a photograph of a property. It's the exception more so than the rule, but there are certain um, geographical areas where you know, properties are very similar. So you can find properties that are very representative of 80% or more of the properties in a given marketplace, whereupon you're going to do very well. Uh, but, but as a foolproof fallback, having a map is a really good idea because you just can't eliminate a map with drop pins representing great deals for sale in the very area, in this case, Scottsdale, that you're looking. So kudos to this ad. And I don't know, Craig, uh, who this is from or if we got any uh, results from it, uh, but I would assume that this would be a pretty good one. Why don't we go to the landing page and uh, take a look at that? Okay, give me just one second so I can type it all in. Hold on one yeah. moment. Uh, well, uh, couldn't you just go bottom? It says uh, search.realestateinfo.com. I see there's a domain name at the bottom. I can try that. Hold on one second. Search.realestateareainfo.com. Okay. Thank just... you for your eagle eyes there, Mr. McDonald. Uh, so I don't know why it doesn't say that above. I don't know why we have that big long mess, why we can't just use that domain if it, if it goes to the same place. By the way, if, um, if you well, have questions I... or comments, please type those in. Don't be shy. Sorry, did I cut you off, James? Yeah, no, no, that's okay. Um, my fear was that that's not going to go to the domain name that the click will, that when you click on it, it looks like it's going to be directed to a more specific page. Um, then, in other words, search.realestateareainfo.com is the, it, it looks to me like that's going to take us to the home page. Um, that's my, that's my guess. It Only actually, because. yeah, it looks like an HDX site. I'm going to um, yep. unpause my screen. Hold on one second. Is the okay. home. So this was the search.realestateareainfo.com. All right. And now um, are you able to copy and paste what's above? I can't copy and paste, but I can type it all in. It might take me a minute. Yeah, it's yeah, take it, a minute. it can't take them to this page. Um, because this It'll probably take them address. to an individual category on the HDX right. page. Right. It's got see. to. Because they've specifically requested, this is for distress sales and foreclosures, so that it has to specify distress sales and foreclosures, um, just as the ad did. Okay. Well, let's look at the next ad while Andrea is uh, typing that big, long domain name in. Give me one second. I am trying to look at it while I type it in. So, <laughs> just it, I'm almost there. 
Why don't you take a chat question? I would, but there are none. Hmm. We have zero chat questions right now, folks. We so, actually uh, have some. Shy. You don't see them? Uh, we have four. No. How come I don't see them? I do not know. We have one from Mark. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Silly me. I'm looking in the wrong area. Okay. Uh, I'm good. I'm okay. I found them. All right. Uh, the first question is from Mark. What metrics on my business manager should I be paying attention to on my Facebook? I believe if you can't measure something, you can't manage it. Well, that's the truth. Success website doesn't seem to want to help with analyzing results except for the number of leads. Thank you. You see, this is why uh, I'm a big believer in, in trying to like kind of figure this stuff out on our own. Um, I would uh, recommend that we all sort of try to understand our own pay-per-click advertising, whether it be Google or Facebook. Uh, but I, uh, I agree with you, Mark. I would want to know all my own numbers so I can sort of uh, compare one approach uh, versus another approach. Anything this you want to add to that, James? Yeah, no, I, I mean, the two things that you obviously want to look at is you want to look at the number of prospects that clicked and the number of prospects that responded, so the leads. Yeah, like I'm, not, the, so I'm not interested in likes or impressions no, or all not. the stuff that computer well, Facebook people like to get excited about. Um, I mean, really, uh, what I'm most interested in, of course, is ROI. How much money did this thing make? But um, but you can't. But the problem with ROI is that you cannot blame the ad for your lack of ability to lead convert. So that's a problem. That's that's not fair to the ad. That's true. That's true. So what we have to look at to the ad is this: Did it generate leads? is most important. Did it generate leads? And then if it generated leads, then we can look at, okay, so where did the leads come from? Uh, you know, what was the budget? How many clicks did it take to generate a lead? And we can look at things like that. That would be very, very important. Uh, and Craig, take a look at this landing page right here that immediately asks the prospect for their contact information rather than anything to do with what they're, um, what they're actually looking for. This is actually Mark Mul Mulnow's um, marketing. So if y'all would like to open his line for information, he is ready. Hey, Mark. Okay, there you are. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is my ad. This is my first time I've uh, done the Facebook with Success website. They're very helpful, but then they're also kind of like they want to keep everything, you know, to themselves and not share a whole lot. So that was the the original question I had to you was looking at the metrics and I and I understand that of course it really just depends upon how many leads you get out of it but there's just so much more there on the business manager it's probably not as important as just obviously the well, leads you get from it. Let, let's let's think this through. Are uh -huh. you paying success website to manage your Facebook marketing? That's part of the package that I've subscribed with them, correct. Okay. So if they taught you how to do it, then you could do it yourself, right? Oh no I'm, and I, I know that that's their their bigger right. picture. I mean so Right, so so just understand that, right? Like, yeah. you know, um, if we taught the home sellers how to do it themselves and how to, <laughs> the buyers how to do it, they wouldn't need us either, right? Yeah, and it's, okay. she's, been, she's been very nice. And I think the, the one thing, and thank you, Andrea, for putting me first on here. She had done that since this is my first time. But uh, I think that the whole header, and I agree with what James said, that, you know, want to buy a home in Scottsdale, there's just too much up there. The hyperlink is too long, and I know down on the bottom where it just says Scottsdale foreclosures and the tagline, you guys have recommended in the past, you know, do something more down there to keep compelling and, and you get, get a call to action. So I was hoping you had something to chime in on maybe how to even get this better because I have gotten well, five leads on it. You can repeat so. the offer, uh, you know, uh, below the, uh, the, pic, the map picture as well. Now, okay. so when, when I click on that big, long uh, domain name, I'm going right to what we're seeing on, on the screen now, right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, so look, what what I would uh, what I would test as well is just our foreclosure landing page, our distress sale landing page. Yes. I would test that. Um, I'm not saying what you have won't work, but it's not okay. something I designed. Okay. Okay, that's something Success Website designed. Gotcha. What I don't what I don't like about it, or at least what I'd like to see tested, is. <laughs> The first thing that should come is the benefit to the prospect, which is describe what you want, right? What 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 price are you looking in? What okay. type of property? The, the, what the prospect wants should come first. 
right? Let them invest a little bit of time in describing what they're looking for. Then we ask them for their contact details. But doing it this way, the prospect has invested zero time in it. They just click off and I'm, I'm you know, not all of them. And, and of course, the very best, most motivated of prospects will give up their anonymity and ask for the list, ask for the property access. Gotcha. But, but, but we could get more of them if we allowed them to focus more specifically on what they wanted, price range. Not only that, but think about this. You'd have much better prospects because when you're following up with a prospect, if somebody was requesting a list of properties between twenty and $28,000, that would be helpful for you to know when you also had another prospect that was looking between six hundred and seven fifty. Yeah, and the, probably and take priority with that prospect. Yeah, and the issue this is that's excellent advice. I appreciate that because the problem is with this one, the way they have it set up, they're bring uh, they're being brought into foreclosures that are upwards of a million dollars and downwards of a hundred thousand dollars, and that's just not you know right for everybody. That's right. So this is this is well, great and, advice. And, yeah, well, if, and, we, if we look at my landing page, uh, Andrew, if you can make that one big, you, you'll see that the buyer feels that they're getting something specific for them. You see, the, the, the buyer has a say in this. It's they tailored. They can click off, do I want uh, just distress sales, do I want fixer-uppers? Uh, they can include their price range, the number of bedrooms. On the landing page that you're using, there's no input. Like buyers, uh, first of all, that's what they're interested in, right? They're interested in what they're interested in. There's no benefit here uh, for me to like give up my information other than I'm going to get some listings, but I have no control over what listings I'm going to get. Um, plus, on my site, if you were the buyer and you invested a couple minutes filling all this information out, you know there's a better chance that you're going to carry through and give us the contact information. Yeah, uh, look, I, I, I don't. I've never driven. I've never driven traffic to that landing page. Is all I'm saying. I'm saying I know mine works, so I would I would, as James started the the webinar by talking about the importance of testing. He said, you know, there's no great marketers, there's only great testers. Uh, but it, I would I would try this landing page and see if it works better. Do a head to head test. And I will, because I can add that to my campaign. I can put several different ads on there, and I think this makes a lot more sense because number one, you're you're doing what works. Uh, it's proven, but you give them the maximum minimum price, all that kind of stuff. I think that that's just uh, it's excellent advice, and I thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Mark. A couple more questions, and, and uh, we'll look at the next uh, ad example here. Um, uh, this question from uh, Stephen Chen. He wants to know how to create the the uh, drop pins on the map. Um, I think you've uh, you've shared that a few times on our ad clinics, James. But maybe you can repeat that again and explain to everybody. Um, well, how they no, can do that. I, I really, I really can. It, it, it's no more complicated than than taking a screenshot. So you go to your maps. Maybe Google Maps is what uh, is what they used here. When you go to Google Maps, you double click to drop a pin. So you're going to drop pins all over the map of your area. In this case, it was Scottsdale. Then you're going to take a screenshot of the map with all the pins that you've dropped. And now you've got a photograph. That's a picture now that you have that you're going to use in your ad. And the picture is of the map of your area with a whole bunch of pins in it that you've dropped by double-clicking on the map. Andrea, do you know how to do that? Have I explained that well, Andrea? You have. And I have tried to do this, and even during our past webinars, to try to get it to work. But I have been unsuccessful on getting multiple pins. Um, but I... I agree. Maybe it's something we need to figure out because a lot of members want to be able to do that on their own. Okay. Well, okay. So, what if you work on that for the, for next week's ad clinic? Because um, what would be great, rather than James just saying, "Well, here's how you do it," is if you could actually show people how to do okay, it. Okay. So, right now, I'm on. Uh, right now, I'm on my maps on um, on uh, my Mac here. You know what? Let me. I'm gonna. I, I'll do this right now, and then I'll I'll send it to you, Andrew, so you can post it up here, the map. Perfect. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. Um, we just got a message while I'm watching it. Janice says there are some YouTube videos videos showing how to create the map with pins. So that's a good idea to go on YouTube, maybe. All right. So what do I enter into YouTube? How to create a pin map? Comma YouTube. I w maybe I wouldn't put a comma. What happens if you do? I don't. 
<laughs> I don't know. Watch out. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> All right. Let's go to our next question here. Uh, this is uh, from Jean Samuel Vachon. Vachon. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Seller campaign. Considering a class of, I'm considering classified ads in my local newspaper. Uh, minimum two hundred dollars per week, or would you suggest going right away with uh, bold leads, the bold lead service? Uh, I would test both. Okay, um, you know, with bold leads, you're buying the leads. Uh, our preference, of course, is always to teach you how to generate your own leads. So you don't have to buy them from somebody else. So here's some things that you could do. Uh, you could probably run an editorial ad. Um, let's go to the editorial ads. You could run these in the newspaper. You're talking about uh, running an ad in your local newspaper. So, Andrea, if you could go to the ad generator, go to classified ads. Let's have a look at uh, either the costly home seller ad or the FISBO ad or the home inspection ad. Those are three I'd recommend because they work really well for pretty much everybody. So you could probably run one of these for $200, uh, editorial, sorry. Uh, you could run some display ads. Uh, we'll look at those in a minute. So let's have a look at some editorial ads that I'd recommend. And the idea here, of course, is we want this to look not like an ad. We want it to look like news. Okay, so there's costly home sellers. And you'll notice we have a, a selection of headlines. This is up and working now. And uh, Andrea, if um, if you could remind me uh, later today or on Monday, uh, we're going to talk about putting some um, uh, statistical USPs up there. If you could uh, collect ad examples of the best statistical USP ads from our members, I think that's what we'll do. So we'll have a, um, a third button under USP ads. So right now, um, uh, right now we've got uh, performance guarantees. Right, and uh, we want to have unique services, and we want to have statistical guarantees. So I want to add to that. Let's have a look at another uh, editorial here. Let's look at the FISBO ad, giving you some of my top performers here. I think your screen might be paused there, Andrea. You are correct. I apologize. No problem. There's the FISBO ad. And you're obviously going to have the name of your city there instead of mine. And then let's look at the home inspection campaign. <clears throat> Perfect. There it is. And again, uh, choice of headlines. Andrea will just demonstrate you've got a choice of different headlines that you can test on these editorial ads. Adri Adrian's done a very good job of, of adding that feature. This uh, enables you now to run your favorite editorial ads over and over and over again, uh, but making them look different because they're going to have different headlines. Let's now go over, uh, uh, let's look at some of the display ads. I want to give uh, Jean Samuel uh, some other options here. Uh, maybe just go to, uh, I think on the home page, we've got something that says just um, display ads. Craig, let me, uh, let me just really fast uh, share with everybody how to do the maps because I've just done it right now. All right, so simple. You go to proud Google of Maps. You're, you're proud of yourself, aren't you? Yes, because it's extremely easy. Okay, well, hang on. Let me just finish this and then we'll go there. Okay, so these are uh, two ads that are really good to run under remnant space. Um, I was able to run these for twenty or thirty dollars on most papers. Remnant space is just extra space, peppered randomly through the paper. Doesn't matter where they run, sports section, um, you know, news, business doesn't really matter. Those are two ads, uh, especially the online home evaluation one. So that's a good one you can run for sellers as well. And this stuff will all cost you, you know, less than two hundred dollars a week if you run them in the right publications. All right, James, go ahead. Okay, so when you go to Google Maps. All right, you're on Google Maps. You will notice in the top left-hand corner where it asks you to search Google Maps. To the left of that, there's a drop-down well, let, let's, menu. Let's do this. Let's have Andrea do it. Let's go to Google Maps. All right, so Andrea, go to Google Maps. All right, she's there. All right, so in the top left-hand corner, you will find a drop-down map 
uh, you'll find a drop down menu. Nope, well, there it is. Yep. Click on that, and then you're going to go to My Maps. So go to My Maps, click, go down, My Maps, click on that. It'll open up a new window. At the very bottom, go down to the very bottom and click on, yep. All right, so now you're going to zoom in on your area. All right, what, zoom in on uh, zoom in on Austin. We'll go to Austin, Texas today. So just zoom in, use the zoom and and zoom on Austin. All right. Now, I want you to place your mouse um, below the search box. You'll see a pin there. You see the pin there? There's a whole bunch of options. Yes, there it is. Now click on that. Now click it anywhere on the map. Now I want you to do it again. And now I want you to do it again. And I want you to do it again. And I'm going to repeat, I want you to do it again about 50 times. And then eventually you're going to go, hey, I'm starting to, I got this now. Yeah. He's a smart aleck, isn't he, Andrew? I got a lot of pins dropped on a map here. Okay, all right, we get it. So now what? Now we have all the pins on the map. Okay, so now you've got your map. Now you're going to take a screenshot of your, uh, of your, of your map right? And that is going to be the picture that you're going to use in all of your ads. Can you do it? What you probably want to do is remove that, um, yeah, remove the little drop down box at the side. There you go. Good job. Thank you. All right, now we know how to do it. And remember, we've recorded this webinar, so you can watch it over and over and over and over and over. And, uh, Thank you, James, for not making Andrea put 50 pins on the map. You're welcome. <laughs> that computer course I took really paid off. I think I'm going to add this to YouTube so you can have your very own James McDonald <laughs> Google pin. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> video. There you go. No, you know what, though? The map, the map is, is a really good thing to have because think about this. You could target in on a neighborhood uh, on a larger geographical area, like the one of Scottsdale is a perfect one because Scottsdale is huge. It's a big, big geographical area. So you're very randomly uh, dropping pins. The problem with doing it in a, in a very uh, concentrated small area is that if the pins are, are physically placed on a very particular street, um, then you're kind of representing a property that maybe doesn't exist. So we want to we want to give the impression that there are multiple properties available in all of Scottsdale. Here's a picture of Scottsdale in Phoenix, and this is representative of these great deals that are available. Because we know that in all of Scottsdale, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of properties that would match that um, that description. Okay. Uh, next question is from uh, Mary uh, Nimix. Uh, Mary is asking, "Am I correct that with online advertising like Facebook?" We're going to uh, drive traffic using direct links and not 800 numbers. Yes, that is uh, correct, Mary. Uh, it wouldn't make sense on Facebook to drive to an 800 number. They're just going to uh, click a link and boom, they're there. Next uh, is from uh, Doug Johnson Sr. And Doug says, I agree that Success Website needs to take your three-day super conference because um, <laughs> what they say is different than what you say. Uh, Andy Ford Andy says, I did a six-hour training the other day to manage my own AdWords. You know, there's online courses out there. Uh, Doug Johnson Sr. is back here again. He says, Success Website is the only way to redirect the landing page to the HDX. Success okay. Website is the only way to redirect the landing page to the HDX. Uh, Kevin Scott says, is there any way, Craig, that you can have success, point our HDX pages to the landing pages you designed, or change uh, what they're giving? Uh, okay, look, here's what you want to test. Let's say that I run um, just a basic ad like the Distress Sale ad. Okay, I might be running it um, on Facebook. I might be running it in the newspaper. It doesn't matter. What you want to test is driving that ad to my distress landing page versus uh, driving it to the HDX. Um, so 
it might be like that's probably not a good example. Let's say that I, I run an ad that says Glenway Estates, beautiful golf course, homes, quiet streets, free list with pictures. I could go directly to uh, that HDX category and immediately when the prospects get there, they would see all the homes in Glenway Estates. But if they click on uh, detailed information, that's when they have to enter their contact information. Or I could go to a landing page, one of our landing pages, uh, that offers a list of Glenway Estates uh, properties. And uh, they have to fill in uh, you know, their criteria, what they're looking for, and their contact information. So you know, the same pages that we've been using. If you do this, my guess is that uh, my landing page will convert at a higher rate than driving them to the HDX. Now, I did uh, ask uh, Success website about that, and, and they agreed. And I said, okay then, if you agree with me, what would be the benefit of driving to the HDX? Well, you know, the buyers get to see the information right away. I said, okay, well, I understand what's, what's in it for the buyers, but what's in it for us? If you agree that driving to my static landing page converts at a higher rate than driving to the HDX, why would we want to drive to the HDX? I mean, just a question, right? So I would, uh, I would test it. I would, I would test that out, and, um, you know, that's, that's a great uh, question, right, is, like, what works better, and, uh, you know, why do something that converts at a lower rate? Right. I mean, if all things were equal, I can see why the HDX would be better because, of course, there's leverage in that in knowing that the prospects are being given the information at their convenience without you having to do anything. The information is being provided, whereas doing it the other way, you have to physically provide them with the information that they're looking for. So, but, but it doesn't work equally, or at least we need to test that. If you did it both ways and you said the HDX generates just as many leads as uh, using the, the non-HDX landing page, then using the HDX would make a lot more sense, no, no question. Um, the debate is whether that's the case or not, and uh, I think you're going to find that it's not that it's HDX, it's that it doesn't allow the prospect to customize um, what they're looking for, which is critical. Anyway, to answer your question, uh, Kevin, you wouldn't have the a HDX uh, uh, point to our landing pages. It would be one or the other, okay, because uh, Kevin's question is, um, is there a way, Craig, that you can have success point our HDX pages to our landing pages that you've designed? Um, it would be in lieu of. You've got to decide whether you want to drive your traffic to uh, an XD XDX landing page with a picture of a bunch of, a bunch of houses in a certain uh, you know part of town, or when you, whether you want to go uh, drive to a static landing page. I'm just saying you should test both, and I I'm telling you what I think will be the winner through my testing. But you know you should test that for yourself. Okay, Kevin Woodward is asking: um, Is there a target conversion percentage that you should shoot for? For example, I'm getting 1,475 leads on my Facebook uh, for my first-time buyer campaign every week, and that results in eight buyer leads, how many of those should turn into leads? Well, look, I'm, I'm mostly interested in, uh, you know, like, uh, is this whole thing worthwhile? How many, what are the quality of leads? And James says, well, it's, it's good to know, um, you know, how many hits you have and how many buyer leads so you know, you know, the conversion of your landing page. Uh, so what would be your opinion on that, James? 1,475 hits or visitors to the landing page, but only eight buyer leads. Uh, well, I mean, it's only, it's only powerful when compared to something else, you know, I mean, compared to what? Um, yeah, I mean, that definitely sounds low, doesn't it? 1,400 people were interested, enough that they clicked, but only eight requested the information. I would be skeptical that those numbers are accurate. All right, uh, Nick and Joe uh, are asking, hi, Craig. I'm wondering which landing pages you guys have found to be most successful, the landing pages that have come with the site or the one success website provides in their management program. Well, I think you guys know the answer. I mean, look, at if um, I wouldn't be giving you pages 
that worked worse. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't say, okay, here, I know there's pages that work better than this, but I want to give you mine. That's what you're paying me for, right? Is I've been doing this for 20 years, the online stuff since uh, 1997, okay? And we've done a lot of testing, and here's the way we look at it. We test and test and test until we can't make it any better. And we keep using what we have until we can make it better. And if we can make it better, we all start doing it that way. So, um, you know, then we have people at Success Website that have not sold real estate. Uh, they're computer guys, and they design landing pages. Now, I'm not saying that they can't come up with something that's great, but I would certainly want to know uh, through testing that what they're providing you, whatever it is, because quite often James and I and Andrea, the first time we see these new landing pages is on the ad clinic. It's not the truth, James. We'll say, well, yeah. you know, where did you get that landing page? Oh, well, we got this from Success website. Yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. We've never seen it before. Well, and that's why it's so important that you upload your ads. You know, we never would, we wouldn't have seen this stuff if you didn't upload your ads and then we didn't go to the to the landing pages. So just goes to show. And it's not that, listen, this isn't about what works and what doesn't work. It's, what, it's about what works the best. So the problem is if you're doing something and it's working to whatever degree, you might think, well, it's working, so it's good. But but what does working mean? You know, and and what if it could work 10 times better? That would be great. So maybe it's just something as simple as tweaking a landing page that could accomplish that. Okay, Alexandra uh, says, just a comment. Bold leads uh, used to generate a lot of leads, and all they had is one form for people to fill out. I'm not sure too much information on the page is better than just a minimum. Okay, yep. so th this is an interesting story. Uh, if you can go to our uh, if you can go to our online home evaluation landing Bold page. Leads asks you for your address, so it's step by step, right. but it asks you for your address. You want to know the value of your home. It doesn't pretend to give you the value of a, a, a generic home. It, you know, it, it's asking you specifically about your property. People care about WIFM. You want to know about the value of your property. It's about me, my favorite subject. So it asks them, first off, what's your address? You want to know the value of your property. What's your address? And now, benefit first, then commitment. So this is the, this is the, the process. Okay, so here's a quick story. So here's my landing page that I developed, designed, messed around with for years and years and years. So um, one day... Uh, we're doing an ad clinic just like this, and we see a, a new version of this. And the new version, it just asks the prospect for their name and their email address. And the argument from Success Website was the same argument that Alexander is making. Well, less is more, right? Uh, they said that through their testing, which James and I never saw the results, but through their testing they claimed that they had discovered that by asking the prospect these questions that I'm asking them actually suppressed response. So, uh, you know, in light of that, all we're going to do on the online home evaluation is uh, we're just going to ask people for their name and their email address. That was their, that was their uh, logic. Okay, well, as it turned out, uh, that didn't work at all. Because I want you to pretend for a minute that you're a seller and you visit a landing page. It doesn't even ask you your address. It doesn't ask you any information about your home. As a seller prospect, are you believing that if you filled this out, you would actually get something accurate? Of course not. How could they give you something accurate? It looks like a, you know, uh, it, it, what it is. It looks like it's just a... Uh, a hunt to try to get people to give the names and email addresses. So, uh, and I think it asked the phone number too. I think it asked for their name, their email address, and their phone number. So imagine a page that looks like that. It says, uh, you know, free online home evaluation. Give us your name and your phone number and your email address, and we'll give you the value. We're going to give you something valuable. We're going to give you an accurate assessment of what your home would sell for. It just didn't work, right? So that's why I believe it's a balancing act between asking them enough information on the online 
home evaluation that they believe they're that this is worthwhile filling out I'm probably going to get something accurate because at least you're asking me a little bit of information about my home versus on the other side of the coin asking way too much information and it is a deterrent to filling out the form so we we have played with that we have tried to um, you know um, test that over and over and over again what needs to be included what is the the um, right balancing act between asking for enough information that they think they're getting something valuable and therefore will fill out the form versus asking for too much information and having them go away or ask, asking for too little information and they think well I'm not going to get anything accurate by filling out this this is just um, you know this is this is trying to trick me into giving me my my contact information so they can follow up with me all right, um, let's keep going here. Uh, let's look at the next ad, and then we'll we'll take some more questions. This right, is a listing sign, and I don't know if you remember, uh, Craig, this was on our, one of our recent Platinum webinars, and you and um, Todd had given some notes about this. Uh, yeah, well, th there's uh, no call to action here. Says your home sold guaranteed, or we'll buy it ourselves. But we're not telling prospects, um, you know, what to do. There's like really no offer. We're not offering a free report. We're not telling them, um, giving them any non-threatening way to to get information on this. Um, we've got the you know the company logo underneath the the offer, or underneath the headline. Um, so this is a home for sale. How about this, Austin and Lynn? What if it said, move up to this home and I'll buy your home for cash? Free report explains this exclusive offer. Visit um, ArizonaGuaranteedSale.com or free recorded message. Okay, that would be a better high, uh, headline maybe than awesome home for sale. But definitely we need uh, we need a call to action. Um, you know, great offer, but uh, or great headline, but we we need to make an offer, which is the free report, make it non-threatening, and and tell people exactly you know how to how to get that. Anything you want to add, James? Yeah, no, I agree. Is um, the the, uh, the benefit of the guaranteed sale program on the for sale sign is um, is twofold. One, to attract move up buyer, but also other sellers that are seeing this for sale sign, other sellers who are considering selling, to see that you'll guarantee this the uh, the buyer's home um, is pretty compelling. It, I, what I, it does yeah, is it I, differentiates it differentiates your for sale sign from all of the others, and that's really the name of the game. One more question. What if it's a crappy house? What if it's not an awesome home for sale? Mm. Anybody with us here ever get a, a listing that's really you know not awesome? It would be kind of almost embarrassing to have a sign that says awesome home for sale. I've made a lot of money selling houses that are not awesome. Sold a lot of awesome houses, but sold uh, a few that you wouldn't describe that way. I mean, what do I do in that example, uh, James? Do I have a different sign made up that says "not awesome. so awesome"? Yeah, you just cross out "awesome" and yeah. and put crummy. Uh, just put no, just cross off the word "awesome." Just have it as a home for sale. Okay, okay. I like that. Okay, uh, let's keep going here. Lots of comments on the map, but I think we beat that to death. Let's go to ad ad number next. So if the member who submitted these next few ads um, is on with us, please let us know. I was a little confused on the order of the um, results versus what we're looking at, so I may have it mixed up. Just a little heads up. Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was reading uh, the next post here. Uh, um, James, did you want to answer Andrea on that one? I'm sorry, Andrea. Can you repeat that? I can. Okay. Um, Neither one of us were listening to that's okay. What we're to say. That's okay. Um, I am not sure the order I placed these Facebook and results in. Um, if our member is on, just give a little information about what we're looking at. 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, so let's go to ad number four. We're waiting for that. San Gabriel Valley Real Estate, free list of current distress homes in San Gabriel Valley, including foreclosures and short sales. I like it. Yep. I like it. So let's go to the landing page. And then we'll take a question. There's your landing page. Boom. Okay, so here's a member that actually like just did what we told them to do. I hope it worked. Okay, if ad number uh, who, three... Who submitted that? I'm not sure. Um, if ad number three goes with ad number four, they got zero leads. But that's what I needed. If they're on, I need a little clarification on that. But I know ad number three and ad okay, number four... Okay, so you're saying the ad we just looked at got zero results. Well, it only got one person clicking on it even. Right. So, if, like I said, if you're on with us and this is your marketing, just let us know for clarification. Free list of current distressed homes in San Gabriel Valley, including foreclosures and short sales. This should work. Well, it, uh, it, I guess what also has to dictate here is who saw it. Um, what were the what were the what was the criteria of who sees this ad, and is San Gabriel too big of an area? In other words, it's not specific enough, or too small of an area. I don't know. This this should work. I look at this ad and I go, okay, I like it. Well, if it only generated one click, I find that um, indicative of it not being put in front of the right audience or enough of them. Uh, maybe whoever submitted that can add uh, some some dialogue to that. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, the this, uh, next question is from Dylan. Every lead that has replied to my first time buyer ad has failed at qualifying. I'm setting up appointments, but I'm having to can cancel each one of them once my lender speaks to the leads. I run a first time buyer ad saying, why rent when you can own? hot list of homes available under $1,500 a month. What can I do to change that in an attempt to attract qualified buyers? Okay, well, um, you could uh, raise the monthly payment to say $2,500 a month. Uh, your landing page uh, could have criteria on it. You know, a list of properties for buyers with a combined family income of $200,000 or more. Okay, you could do the same thing. Uh, well, there's other qualifiers you could put into it. But bottom line, if you can't get this to work uh, and it's not generating qualified leads, then you have to run a different ad. Right? There's no sense in continuing to do something that's not generating, you know, quality buyers and sellers. Anything you want to add to that, James? Oh, I totally agree. The other thing you might want to look at is a geographical area. Um, can you offer properties in? in higher end geographical areas in your marketplace. Like for example, if Craig ran an ad that, that offered, um, you know, Glendale Estates, uh, Stonehaven Estates, a uh, hot list of properties, anyone that's looking in those kinds of areas is already looking in a, in a, in a certain pricing point. We already know that. So it, that by virtue of the area would be an eliminator for those looking for lower end properties because, um, because of the geographical location. Here's an ad from Nazira. Hey, Nazira, I look forward to seeing you on Monday at the Toronto Boot Camp. Everybody knows that, right? I think that's a business card. Well, it could be a postcard, couldn't it? It's a business You're card. Right. It's a business yeah, it card. Is, okay. It is a business card, though. Well, a business card technically is a postcard. It's just a tiny little one. It's a little wee one. Uh, so let me uh, remind everybody... Uh, in the Toronto area, in Canada, in Quebec, uh, we have the boot camp, the Toronto Coaching Boot Camp coming up this Monday. Okay, we're starting early. I'll uh, take the stage, 8.30, 9 o'clock. We're going to go till 6 o'clock. And uh, we've got uh, some of our coaches are going to be present there. We've got an exciting panel. Uh, Todd Walters is also flying up, platinum coach. He's going to be there. We've got a lot of our platinum members so it's going to be a great day. So um, just want to remind everybody so you don't forget, show up, get to bed early Sunday night. We've got a big day on Monday, and uh, I know Nazira is going to be there. And the so, California boot camp is on November the 19th in Huntington Beach. 
just so all all of our uh, West Coast members that are listening going, hey, what about us? November nineteenth, but we've already got a ton of you that have uh, that have confirmed your attendance, so that's good. Yes, we don't want anyone feeling neglected. No one. Okay, so you're right. This is a this is a uh, business card. Your home sold guaranteed or all bought to discuss the sale of your home. Call me. Uh, or get a free report that details the inner workings of this exclusive offer at NaziraHasTheBuyers.com. On the flip side, your home sold guaranteed or I'll buy it. And uh says the same thing, right? Yeah, Craig, I really like your idea. Um, you talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and it's, um, it's just one of those things where only you could know by actually doing it for all of those years is that – how often you write little notes on the back of the business card and having that space on the back of the business card to write a note to somebody or to allow a prospect to write a little note, how convenient that was and how very often you utilize that. And I thought that was a really good suggestion because it's practical. It's a trade-off, but you're right. Um, I mentioned that to James a few weeks ago. I always like that one side of my business card to be blank for my own purposes so I could write down uh, information. Uh, I see some agents leave it blank and then they have the back of it glossy so you can't write on it. But it's a trade-off because now you don't have a message on the back side. But uh, that's a good-looking business card, Nazira. I like it. And see, uh, Nazira is with Remax, but it's not huge. It's there. You can see it, but you know, she's not wasting any real estate on her business card with her company logo. Let's go to ad number seven. Ad number seven well, is also... Like, uh, from Nazira, but she wanted your thoughts on having these for her OSA. Yeah, you can do that. Why not? Uh, now, you've got your team logo there, so that's fine. So you're promoting your team, uh, but each one of your outside sales agents has their own business card. Now, this one's a little bit different, you see, um, on the back side of it. It says Home Buyers. Buy your next home with Team Jamal, and if you're not satisfied within 12 months of your closing date, we'll buy it back or sell it for free. Okay, let's go to the next example. Okay, more stats, and does that go with ad number nine? I believe so. Hey, we've got some pins here. How long would it take you to make that map, Andrea? A really long time. Okay, now... <laughs> It's interesting here because our member is driving prospects to the free recorded hotline number. Now, I never did that, but I'm interested in knowing how that worked. A uh, hot list of uh, distressed sales and bank foreclosures in Richmond Hill. Do you notice how the headline below the picture stands out more than the headline above it? Just curious as to why we wouldn't want that headline above the picture to be as dominant as the headline below. Um, do we know who submitted this? I do not remember the member who submitted this. No, but it looks like they got they got two leads, but it's not clear to me, at least, on if those those came from the hotline or from them clicking on right. the the marketing. Well, they're, you know, uh, I, I guess you can click on it, right? You can click on that, and you can go somewhere. We don't know where, right? Where do we go? We don't know where when you click on it. Uh, or you can call the 800 number. So we can't look at the landing page. Because York Region uh, BuySellHome.com will be the home page of the less branded site, but it won't be the actual landing page they're driving to. Okay, so let's go to ad number next. Um, let me know if you just want to skip. It's the results. exact same, the exact same thing. Got right. two leads, but yep, skip, skip. Ad number twelve uh, for renters, just another version, I assume. Same member. Yep, same member. I'm interested to know uh, whoever this member is. Someone in York Region, someone in my area. How is the one eight hundred number? How's the recorded message working for you? This is the first time I've ever seen a hotline yes. in a Facebook ad. Yeah, but you know, let's not uh, just because we haven't seen it doesn't necessarily mean it, it won't work. I'm interested. I'd like to know how that worked. You gotta be open minded, you know, Andrea. Well and I would assume on most smartphones too, you would just be able to click or, you know, point yeah. on the phone number and it would just dial it. 
you wouldn't have yeah. to put it in or anything. So that, yeah, I'm interested to know if that would work or not. Okay, we'll go on to ad number 13. I have no information about it. Okay, uh, well, it looks like it's print. Looks like it's print, and I don't know where it's running, but we've got a whole bunch of our little classified ads. It says thinking of buying or selling, and then we've got a whole uh, laundry list of ads, and um, you know, these are our ads for sure. Um, no domain name on any of them. Notice that, James? Just an 800 number. Yeah. And I guess uh, we don't know where it works, so I'm not going to say I don't like the ads or my ads, but I would have a domain name in there and the 800 number, and um, not sure where that, you know, maybe that's running in a real estate publication. It's probably where I'd run something like that. Let's go to ad number next, and then we'll take a couple more questions. This is from Stephen Chen, an editorial. Um, no results were provided. Okay, well, looks pretty good to me. What do you think, James? Column width is the same. Yep, I like Headline it. Headline looks good. Um, I like that it says Clovis Holmes right in the headline. Um, you know, again, uh, I know it's a little nitpicky thing, but don't capitalize every every word. Just the just the first. Newspapers overwhelmingly just don't do that. It's just unnecessary. It makes it look salesy. Well, unless the newspaper is doing it. Well, you can see they don't. Halloween. Not. Well, Halloween fun is, um, but but you'd have to look in the newspaper, and what you'll generally see is that two things they don't do with the headline. They don't center it, and they generally don't use capital letters other than the first word and proper proper names. That's a generalization, but it's pretty pretty standard. Um, it's hard to say whether this is either of those because the headline happens to perfectly, you know, fit the entire width of the ad. So you could say it's lined up to the left margin. I have Anyways, a feeling this, this is an on line, this looks great. I have a feeling this is an online um, newspaper. Also, uh, what we're looking at is a snapshot from him going online and looking at the newspaper. Um, we've looked at we've looked at several of these over the past few ad clinics, and Stephen has yet to provide information. But I would ask if you have any more, Stephen, that provide a couple of the pages so we can kind of get a better idea of what the paper looks like and what other editorials in this paper look like. Hold on one second. Another Facebook ad for ad 15. You take that one, James. I'm going to start reading some of the chat questions. All right. Um, so ad number 15, uh, it's from Las Vegas Home Info, which is great. And it says, first time home buyers, why rent when you can own free list with pictures of Las Vegas homes available for under 1200 a month? Um, you should have right underneath that, you need to have your clickable link. Just make it obvious. Make, make the call to action absolutely obvious. I know it's obvious to us, but it isn't obvious to everybody, and we need to make it that way. Now, this is an example of a, of a photograph of a property that actually could work only because um, Las Vegas has an abundance of newish properties. This is very representative of and so you might not be disqualifying you know a lot of uh, first time home buyers with a property photograph like this one but i would test this head to head against a map of las vegas with a whole bunch of pins dropped in it test that and uh, i guess andrew we could look at the landing page to see uh where las vegas area free home info.com that sounds to me like it's a uh home page I, I was thinking so too. I think always yeah. on the bottom, well, not always, but most of the time I'm finding that the very one on the bottom is the home page. But I can pull it up. Give me just one second. Yeah, we've got some great questions and comments in here. Uh, I love it when you guys notice stuff that uh, James and I don't notice. That's, uh, that shows you guys are paying attention. Okay, um, let me know when I can take some of these, Andrea. Um, take a couple of questions while I'm trying to pull up um, this landing page real quick, if you don't mind. 
Okay. Uh, this is from Keith Powers. The advantage that I see from the bold leads landing page over the success website landing page is that even if the prospect leaves the page, you get a partial lead by collecting their home address. With the su success landing page, you either get everything or you get nothing, no partial leads. Okay, well, um, you know, if you take a look at um, my philosophy on this is um, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, just work with the best of the best leads. Will everybody provide all their information? No, but a, enough of them did that I couldn't even keep up with them all. So the, the robots, the landing pages and the hotline scripts do two jobs. Not only do they answer all the inquiries, they do some sifting and sorting for us. So uh, what does it tell us about somebody that will only give us their address and nothing more? Could you pursue that? Well, I guess you could. Look, bottom line, Keith, um, we should be testing both. M most of our successful members, they generate their own leads. They have a success website. Uh, they use bold leads. They use ZBuyer. They use Commissions, Inc. Uh, they use SmartZip. And when I ask them why, they use so many of these external lead generators, they say because each one makes me more money than what it costs me. It's a pretty good answer, right? So, um, yeah, you're going to experiment. Always let the results that you get dictate what you're going to continue doing and what you're not going to continue doing. Uh, Daniel Pilson says, Craig, how do we get their phone number from the find out what your home is really worth? Uh, well, that's on the landing page, one of the fields. Daniel is we ask him for their phone number. Uh, Alexandra is um, she's referring to um, uh, to uh, the for sale sign that's at awesome home for sale. Uh, Alexandra says I once sold um, a hoarder house a home that was owned by a hoarder and I didn't even know what picture to advertise it was so bad. Uh, Mac Rogers is asking, in my opinion, the distressed sales are in my area are really low. How do you address that when the prospect complains? Okay, so I'm going to do a role play with James, and here's how we're going to handle this, Mac. Ring, well, ring. Wait a minute. Did you say a distressed sale or did you say a bank foreclosure? Because uh, there is no dic dif def dictionary definition of a distressed sale. A distressed sale is a property that's had a price reduction. It's a vacant property. Uh, it's a divorce. It's a property that is, um, uh, you know, uh, listed by another realtor. In other words, so it's come back the on the point market. That Shane, the point that there James McDonald is, no is making is it is your list, so it's whatever you think is a distress sale. It could be vacant homes, homes that were recently reduced. What's a distress sale? Now, if, if they were asking for a bank foreclosure, if you, if, they said, um, if you offered a free list of bank foreclosures only, then that would be different. Yes, you're right. If they specify, I'm looking for a bank foreclosure between 200 and 210, and there aren't any, then there aren't any. So here's how the dialogue goes. Craig, is it only bank foreclosures that you're interested in? Or if I could also show you some really exceptional deals of properties that are available in your price range and match what you're looking for, although they may not be bank foreclosures, they are excellent deals. Would you be interested in learning about those properties as well, Craig? I've never had anyone say no. That's what they really want when they request a list of bank foreclosures. They want a good deal. All right, our next question is from John. Uh, John says, uh, that San Gabriel ad, the Facebook ad that we looked at, remember a few minutes ago, James, and you and I looked at it and we said, well, that, that looks pretty good. Uh, John's pointing out, well, you do realize that the ad spend was only $15 total. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, I mean, uh, I'm not surprised at that because it, the ad itself and the landing page were very, very good. There's just no question about it. They're very good. So it has to do with who saw it, how many saw it. Um, you know, that's what's going to dictate the response on an ad like that. If nobody sees the world's greatest marketing message, you can't expect to generate response. So I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, and, and um, you know, obviously makes sense. Okay. Alan Levy says, if you take a look at the left on ad number three, only a thousand people were targeted. That is a very small target population. Too small, in my opinion. 
Yeah. Okay, good observations. Before you go on, um, just you know, we have uh, 24 ads uh, that we have scheduled to look at today. Um, we may not get to them all, but I wanted to um, go back to where we were with the landing page with the Las Vegas marketing. It did go to the home page, um, but I pulled up where it should go. Hopefully that's where it goes. Okay, are you saying we should probably look at some more ads here? Well, we can. What you are the leader. You, <laughs> whatever you want to okay. do. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're right. We should. Uh, it's just we have so many, uh, so many uh, questions here. Let me take one more, and then we'll go right to the ads. Okay. Here's the last one. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, John Samuel. My Remax office doesn't permit me to implement the guaranteed sale program uh, because of license requirements. I will then test your home sold at a price acceptable to you, or I'll get, I'll pay you the difference. I want to add a sign right to my listing saying, move up to this home and I'll sell yours for free. Do you think there's a conflict? Uh, yes, I would look at, uh, you've got to decide which USP you want to offer before you make sign riders. Okay, here's what you're going to discover. That one of the USPs will work better than the others. Once you discover which one works the best, then that's when you plaster it everywhere. Okay, but don't you folks agree there's probably a best approach? There's probably going to be one offer that you make that works far better than all the other approaches. Once you figure that out, then you plaster it everywhere. Then you own it. You own that USP, that unique selling proposition in your marketplace. You become the realtor that's known for that. Okay, let's go back to the ads and look at the next one. Hold on just one second. Oh, sorry, you had the you had the landing page up there, right? I did, I did. Um, the the landing page on the very bottom goes straight to the home page, and then I had pulled up okay. where it should go. And the only thing I think you guys would comment is maybe make it a little more personalized for the area. Now, is this the member that was complaining that the leads weren't qualified? I I don't know. I'm not sure about that. All right, so we could put qualifiers onto this, right? Don't pay another cent in rent to your landlord before you read this free special report. So, I, no, I think it was offering a list of homes. Well, hold it. Wait. For, uh, the ad says free – sorry, first-time home buyers. Why rent when you can own? Free list of pictures. Wait. Whoa. Hold it. But it doesn't match up with the offer made on the landing page. We're offering a free list of properties on the Facebook ad, but we're not offering a list of first-time properties on the landing page. It's the wrong landing page. That may be my what? fault. Okay. That may be my fault. So which one should it go to, uh, Craig, on the um, – I may just have pulled up the wrong one because th the one I typed in goes straight to the home page. Okay, so you might have guessed wrong. Okay, I might have guessed uh, wrong. is there a, a list of first-time buyer list. homes? It should go to the hot list page, which should be customized for um, the, uh, for first-time buyers, right? Okay, so all we have You've to do is for a list of properties. Yeah, so take the headline off the Facebook ad and plunk it here. Yeah. Right. It could say it could just say uh, first-time buyers. Why rent when you can own? Uh, receive your free list of uh, with pictures of Las Vegas homes available for under twelve hundred dollars a month. That's how you do that one. So we don't really know, in fact, uh, which landing page our member was was pointing to. Ad number sixteen looks like you've got a bunch of sign riders. Trade up to this home, and I'll buy your home for cash. And we have it on red on white and then we have white on red and then we have both I like the one in the middle I like B what, what about you James um, yeah I kind of like A but okay well then we could probably agree you and I and just go with C <laughs> yes it's kind of a compromise isn't it <laughs> uh, look they're, they're all pretty good, good. you know they're really good you like. yeah yeah, they're but, really uh, good. But we all know that uh, James is wrong and B looks better. All right, let's look at <laughs> ad number 17, please. Uh, anything number... on a white background kind of stands out. I don't know. Ad number 17? Maybe newspapers are on to something with that whole white background thing. 
Now, any information on ad number 17, Andrea? Um, no results. I just know it's going to go in a newspaper. Okay. Your home sold in 31 days or less guaranteed, or I'll pay you $1,300 cash. Uh, so let's get rid of that line below the or I'll pay you $1,300 cash. Why the stop sign? That line is a stop sign to the prospect's eyeballs because that's your call to action. Right? That's your offer and your call to action. You're offering a free report and you're telling them how to get the free report. Of course, there is no mention uh, that this is a free recorded message. I would have free recorded message instead of the word calling because how do I know that when I call that number and I answer ID 1082 that a salesperson, a, a human being might answer the phone. Um, so I would uh, do it in the order we have it, free recorded message and then uh, the website and then the direct phone number. You've got the 800 number, call me direct, and then you've got your domain name. I know we're nitpicky, but if you go to the ad generator, just copy it. Just follow exactly how we've got it laid out. Number 18, my buddy Alex here in Newmarket. Your home sold for 100% of your asking price guaranteed or I'll pay you the difference. Now look at this, no stop sign. He runs it exactly how we want him to run it. To discuss the sale of your home, call me at, or for a free report outlining the inner workings of this program, visit. Uh, the only thing that Alex doesn't have is a free recorded number. No free recorded number. On the flip side, uh, the Alex Malaya VIP Home Buyer Satisfaction Guarantee. So this is a business card. Buy any home through me, and if you're not satisfied with your purchase within 12 months of the closing date, I will sell it, and my commission is free. Okay, uh, how do I get information on that, Alex? It's a great offer, but you're not telling me what to do. So we need a little call to action there for a free report on how it works, visit my website, call me, do something. Remember, we have to tell people what to do. Number 19, please. Uh, Alex says he's working on it. That's just a proof, okay? All right, uh, what is this? Kathy Buck and Associates, your home sold, guaranteed, or we'll buy it. And uh, this appears to be a newsletter, I would think. Is Kathy with us? Your thoughts, James McDonald? Um, yeah, what is this? Is it a flyer? Um, I guess the most important thing is, regardless, it needs – the headline is most important. And it kind of um, – the headline is definitely being diluted. Um, Probably a newsletter is what I'm guessing. I think it's a newsletter. She yeah. submitted a second attachment also, but it, I know that for sure uh, what you're about to see is a newsletter. But she it was not clear on what the other one was. It's is very... it an online newsletter or is it a print newsletter? Maybe the one on the left appears to be online. And the, uh, although they're both, uh, they both have blue clickable links, so that would indicate to me that both of them are online. Okay. Well, look, when you're you're doing a newsletter, uh, you just want to make sure that it's it's doing for you what you want it to do. And uh, I get lots of newsletters from financial planners and uh, other professionals I do business with, and sometimes. You know, if I don't think there's a whole lot in it for me, there's no WIFM, it goes right into the garbage. So uh, we want to make sure that that newsletter is, is making offers, it's generating us leads, it's uh, uh, creating top of mind awareness, uh, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, now we have created a newsletter for all of you to, to copy. Okay, and we have suggested that you get your affiliates to advertise in that newsletter to cover your costs. Because our philosophy is, well, first of all, if I was to ask you, all of you, should you have a newsletter, 100% of you would say, yes, I know, Craig, I should have a newsletter. Now, if I ask you how many of you actually have a newsletter, very few of you have a newsletter.
okay so everyone knows they should but very few of you do and those of you that do have a newsletter most often say it's not really doing much for me so we, we try to make that easy I figure hey if you don't have to do anything and it doesn't cost you anything that's going to dramatically increase the chances of you actually having a newsletter and we'll talk more about follow-up and uh, what a prospect newsletter should look like what a client newsletter should look like and what a past client newsletter should look like because you're trying to accomplish different things in each case uh, so uh, I can't really read that um, you know unfortunately I can't read everything it says it's kind of small here uh, but the important thing for Kathy is she's got a newsletter so she's already ahead of 90% of you because you don't have one now can we make it better can we play with it of course we can always make it better right so um, congratulations to Kathy for having a newsletter and thanks for sending that in and you can see it has a theme here in October um, you know it's uh, definitely based around the season uh, oh by the way uh, Alex uh, here's a note from Eric uh, Eric says uh, please tell Alex uh, that he that that a black background on a business card is really not a good idea he says they're awful you can't write on them and he's been there and done it and it was kind of a disaster so um, that's what Eric has to say our next couple of ads um, both from different members but they are classified ads and I'd like to just, uh, when you're going to submit something of this type, it's just much more helpful if we see it in the actual context of the paper when, mm -hmm. when Craig writes well these things. Well said, Andrea. Uh, yeah, so it's an ad. Uh, find out what your home is worth online, uh, westlahomevalue.com. Uh, if it's running in print, you want to uh, include your, your uh, recorded hotline number as well. westlahomevalue.com could the headline maybe say this James find out what your West LA home is worth online if we're targeting westlahomevalue.com I'm thinking they are because that's a domain name why not be specific and have that in the headline as well yeah ad, ad number 21 stop paying your landlord's mortgage free report reveals how easy it is to buy your own home okay well uh, again this is probably in print it looks like my ad there is no domain name on that so uh, depending on where it works will depend on how it works ad number 22 is a landing page know what homes are selling for in your neighborhood what would your home sell for get our free list of recent Katy 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 Katie, Texas Katy Texas home sales and active listings on your street and in your neighborhood no charge or obligation what do you think of the no charge or obligation do I need to have that on the less branded site like why would I think if I'm going to what appears to be I don't know a community website or a government site do I need to have no charge or obligation yeah it's probably unnecessary certainly to have in the headline there well I'm just thinking if it, if it sends the opposite message if I'm uh, really believing that this is and not uh, only that but it looks to me like it says obligation it's spelled incorrectly it, it looks uh, I don't know I that's that's how obligation. we talk in Texas that's how we talk. Is it? Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> so, it's that fun. makes sense. <laughs> well, why don't we have the headline saying, uh, "You all want to know what you all want to know what your house is worth." There you uh, hey. say. Have you ever? Uh, I reckon I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> a big picture of a horse right. with a sold sign. <laughs> Find out I reckon. Your horse. I reckon Find you need this. Y'all. I reckon you all need this information. <laughs> That's right. It's free, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay you know, on that note uh, on that note it has nothing to do with this but I was reading something on the weekend about different phrases and different words and pronunciations all over America that people use and it was really interesting 
you know, what part of the country said um, you all and all these different uh, words uh, and different meanings that words have Definitely. in different parts of the country. It's, it was yeah. pretty fascinating. Yeah, little funny different things like um, um, I say trash now. I never said trash. I say garbage, right? I say trash now. It's called trash here. Um, there are certain states where they call a license plate a tag and then other states where it's called license plate. Uh, well, in the, in the northern states, we say, I want to go to the washroom. Right. Okay. In the southern states, I want to go to the restroom. Right. Uh, in the northern states, um, okay, in the, in the north, I think it said in the northern states, uh, they say, I want to pop. In the right. southern state, um, and, then, and then I think in the western, uh, the western states, yeah, when it, I say pop, be, I want people a soda. Look at me like, what's a pop? Yeah, soda. Okay. Uh, so, so, but in the southern states, they're brand specific. They wouldn't say I want a pop Coke. or a soda. They say I want a Coke or I want a you know a Pepsi. Yeah, where I grew up, everything was a Coke. I want a Coke. No, I said Dr. Pepper. You know, as a Coke. A Coke. Oh, here's yeah. another one too. Um, they call what we call a chocolate bar. They call a candy bar. In, we don't say candy bar. It's a chocolate bar. So I don't know. It sounds ridiculous, but yes, uh, any any kind of what we'd call a candy bar here in Canada, it's a chocolate bar. Well, Craig, it was a long time before I figured out what a garburator was. Yes. You never know what you're going to learn on the eye clinic. Yeah, we're really, uh, really going off in a different direction. I'm sure now everyone's going to be uh, weighing in on their little. Uh, Y'all making me miss my grandparents who lived in Alabama. <laughs> That's, <a dog. laughs> That's awesome. That's great. That's great. Okay. Okay, so we have two more ads. I think we can get to them before we end. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, uh, Laura's asking, what the heck is a garburator? See? So what, what is a garburator, Andrea? Tell everybody what a like garburator is. Like a garbage is. disposal. Yes, a sink, garbage disposal in your sink. Yeah. Yeah. Carburetor. Okay, ad number 23. Uh, your home sold for 100% of market price guaranteed or I'll pay you the difference. No gimmicks for information on my exclusive guaranteed sale program. Order a free report by visiting. Boom, this looks pretty good. Is it a business card? Or is it a postcard? I think it's a business card. I'm going to go with business card. No, I'd say business card. All right, looks pretty good to me. Got his uh, brokerage name there. Let's go with ad number 24. Okay, this is going to go to 50,000 restaurants, and it's going to be the top of a police mat. Okay. The top of a, a what map? A police mat. Place mat, like you eat on it. Oh, I thought you said a police map. <laughs> top of a place mat. Place okay. mat. Five restaurants, 50,000 copies. I got my numbers wrong. Okay, this Makes is from Bertrand. Yeah, 50,000 copies. Okay, well, look, uh, it's not targeted in any way at all. I mean, uh, look, this would be the same as advertising on shopping carts. So let's have a look at it. Um, now, I'm going to have James translate this. Go ahead, James. Um, this says your property sold in 30 days or I'll pay you $3,000. Not bad. Now, uh, you had French up until what grade? Nine, ten. Grade nine, okay. Perfect. Nine, uh, okay, nine. so we've got a USP here. And then we've got some uh, – okay, so really impress me. What, are the ad, what is the ad on the right say? And then what Never does he mind. add on the left side? Okay. Never uh, mind. <laughs> I just I don't feel like telling you right now. <laughs> okay. So uh, Bertrand says uh, on the right is bank foreclosures. Okay. See, and on See, the hard. left, so on the right is bank foreclosures. I mean that that makes sense, right? Bank foreclosures, finance, bank foreclosures, and on uh, the left is uh, first-time buyers. Okay, well, look, everything's a test, so let us know how that works. You've got a USP ad in the middle, and uh, you've got two ads targeting buyers, right? One offering foreclosures, 
list of foreclosures on the right hand side and on the left hand side a list of homes for I'd like to see a hotline number in there for those two because it's print and uh, hotline number would be would be good to have but again this is um, yeah I hope you didn't spend a lot of money on this it's it's definitely a test 250 dollars all right well let's see how it works Okay, folks, uh, we're going to wrap it up. We are at uh, 90 minutes into this. I hope you enjoyed uh, our time here together. Uh, we've got our helpline call on Monday. James, you'll be doing that because I'll be doing the boot camp in Toronto. Well, actually, on Monday, I will be in Sacramento. Um, all next week, we'll be up in the Bay Area doing, uh, doing half-day seminars in preparation for our big super conference um, on Monday. So I don't want to say that for sure, but either way, we're going to do a helpline session on Monday and uh, I will do my best, Craig, since you're going to be definitely busy at the, uh, at the boot camp, we will figure it out and, um, and we'll, we will definitely be having a helpline session on Monday. So save up all your questions over the weekend and uh, we'll take them all on Monday morning. Yeah, and Adele just typed in something very important. Uh, go Toronto Blue Jays. Hey, there you go. So we'll uh, wish them uh, luck this evening as they play in Kansas City in Game 6. I want to thank everybody for being with us, and uh, you guys have a great weekend. We'll talk to everybody soon. That concludes today's Ag Clinic. See you all later.